recently. Someone asked in the comment section of one of my manifesting generator videos, hey, this is a part one, but I, I couldn't really find a part two. And I've definitely found some additional manifesting generator in real life videos. However, it did trigger that for right now, it's a great opportunity to reassess and reshare what I've learned so far in my journey with human design. So this video is gonna be like an update video. I don't know if this is part two or part five, to be honest. <laughs> Hashtag MG life. But it is going to be an update video of my human design experience as a sacral true manifesting generator, meaning that I have a channel that attaches from my sacral to my throat. So manifesting generators are a defined sacral plus an energy center connected to the throat. If you have your sacral connected to the throat through a direct channel, it is considered to be a true manifesting generator. I hate that terminology, but that's it's what we got right now. I actually haven't come up with some better terminology for that one. Brain, start thinking about it. So I first learned about human design back in 2018 and it was through a podcast. And as a manifesting generator, so much clicked for me when I was listening to this podcast and specifically the explanation of what a manifesting generator is and how the energy shows up in the world. And it became this awareness and understanding for me about who I am and how my energy interacts with the world around me. So I continued to consume information and learn about human design and I learn best by teaching. So that's why you've been watching a whole bunch of human design videos on this channel. My best way of learning the content and taking it in and assimilating it is to teach. And I've said this before, and I will continue to say it. I love human design as a tool, as a system, as a additional piece of a puzzle. It is a way to speak about energy that feels to me tangible and practical. Now that said, human design is not intended to be limiting or restrictive. It simply allows us to better understand ourselves. And with that, restrictive and limiting is different than bringing awareness to unconscious aspects of who we are. So there can be some things in human design that confront us that originally we may brush off as limiting or restrictive, but may actually serve a really valuable purpose in bringing light to something that is unconscious. So if there is something that you are like, I don't like that, I invite you to investigate it just a little bit further and determine what it is, if it truly is something that's limiting or restrictive, or if you have a story about it, or if it is an unconscious component of your energy that you just don't want to address. And that's okay, just bring awareness to, is it actually limiting and restrictive? Or is it something that you have an association to and you don't wanna look at it right now? Also, there is not one right system. This is a piece of a puzzle. I know I already said that, but I have to be really clear about it. This is not the end all be all. This is not the single source of truth in any way, shape or form. So please do not take it as such. This is not a predictive tool. Please do not attach yourself and your understanding of the entire world around it. It is a very useful and skillful way of speaking about how energy interacts and better understanding our differences and how each one of us uniquely brings our energy into the world. All right, now 
Are you ready? Say it with me. Nothing is good or bad, nothing is right or wrong, and nothing is better than or worse than. This is all just a tool to get to know ourselves and to better stand in who we naturally, truly, uniquely are in this world. And with that, <laughs> what have I personally learned in these past three years being and, and learning about my human design, teaching about human design, and for me personally as a sacral, true manifesting generator. Speaking of restrictive language, the very first thing I want to talk about is the fact that in traditional human design languaging, manifesting generators are spoken about as a hybrid type of generator and manifester. And with that, our aura is that of a generator, which means that we are designed to respond to the world around us. Now, what I have learned through my personal experience, through my personal experiment, is that is so false. It, it has the right intention, but we are a unique energy type, all to ourselves. We are not a, com we are a combination, but like, it's different. It's more nuanced than just a hybrid of the two. So when it comes to responding, the thing that I've really taken in and realized is I don't have to respond to the outside world. I can respond to an inner urge, an inner impulse. I can respond to an idea within something that lands. Now I do have an open crown and an open Ajna, so it's it's from the outside, but it appears like it's inside. So what I want to say is when that hit of inspiration comes through, your response is your response. Like I can feel that same, except last night as an example, I was lying in bed and I was trying to think about what videos I was going to film for today. And I opened up my mind and as I opened up my mind to these urges, these impulses, these inspirational ideas, they just started trickling through and I was like, oh that, oh that. And I had that response of yes, that and getting excited for these videos. So what I want to impart is that especially as a manifesting generator, but honestly, generators, you can, you can do this too. You can respond from something that's not necessarily an external stimuli, but especially for manifesting generators, because a manifester creates that internal urge and impulse, it's okay to respond internally to an internal stimuli. Speaking of this hybridization, the other component that I have found being crazy important for manifesting generators is inform, inform, inform. This energy that manifesting generators have is the warm and stable and reliable energy of the generator and it is the impulse, the urge, the quick action, the moving forwards of the manifester. And when this energy combines into a person and we take action without informing others, we rock their world in a way that no one saw coming, no one expected our energy to have that much importance to another's experience. So it's super crazy important as a manifesting generator to, and I have to highlight this, inform, inform, inform. It is going to make your life so much smoother. It is going to remove those barriers and those blocks. It's going to get you ahead of people's concerns. It's going to help bring people on board with you and really support you. It's going to help magnetize the right people to you. And it's going to help you move forward that much quicker. So please, this hybrid type 
it is so important to inform. And I'm talking like inform before you even know what that you're going to do it. Inform in what I call like the lagging action. You have the inspiration, but you're not quite ready to move. Or sometimes what I do is I, I will generally inform. And you can, you've actually seen this in an old video of mine when I was shifting content in this channel. I also do it in my personal life where I'll sort of say like, hey, I need a shift, I need a change in my life. I don't know what that shift and change is going to be, but I need you to know that I can feel that shift and change needing to happen and I might end up acting on it relatively quickly. I'll keep you informed as I as I go, as I know what, what that's gonna look like. But it's just that voicing in the lagging action before you're ready to move or before you move or in a work environment inform when you've made a mistake. That was one of my big ones is if I caught my mistake, typically what I would try and do is I would fix it first and then I would tell people and that got me into so much trouble. And so now I say, hey, I caught my own mistake. Here's what I'm gonna do about it. Here's what I'm gonna fix it. Here's how you're gonna see that come forward. And it has been a game changer. So definitely inform, inform, inform. Something else that I've learned through my own experiment with human design and especially through teaching human design is I love the variables. I thrive on those little four arrows. I think they are so vast with information and knowledge and I'll have all those videos linked in the description because you all seem to really like those too. And with that, I hate my digestion color. I hate it. Yes, it's true that if my stomach isn't doing well or my natural tendency might be to lean towards cleaner, simpler foods, or I might experience a time where I'm really excited about eating tofu and then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I'm done with tofu for a bit. Or I'm really excited about eating yams and I'm like, okay, I'm done with eating yams for a bit. I do go through food phases. However, I love curries. I love dolls. I love foods that have layers of flavor. I love foods that have layers of spices. I love flavor. And my digestion type apparently doesn't love that. And I'm just not okay with that. So this is one of those things that it's an awareness. I'm aware of it. And when I do have those more hearty or fully rich and flavorful sorts of meals, I try to keep them made at home with really pure, simple ingredients. But my goodness, there are a lot of ingredients in those foods and I love them. And of course, I notice that processed foods with lots of different ingredients in them don't feel nutrient rich to me. Like I can actually feel that they don't feel nutritionally satisfying to me. But you know what? They don't feel nutritionally satisfying to anyone because they're not nutritionally satisfying. So anyway, soapbox, rant, personal experience, I love the variables and this is just one of the ways that I've brought awareness to how I eat and to what I eat and I also recognize that that particular tool within this human design system is not something that I am deeply interested in right now in this part of my journey. I want foods that are packed and layered with flavors and spices and ingredients. And that's just where I'm at and I'm fine with it. And speaking of variables, one of the things that I love so much about the variables is not just that they're super practical for us to better understand ourselves and where our energy best flows, but they're also so practical when it comes to interacting with those closest to us. So as an example, my partner and I have completely opposite variables. 
He's a morning person. I like to take time in the morning. He's spontaneous and wants a new exciting environment. I really like to know where we're going and what we're doing and for how long. He's able to tune out and talk, like completely block all senses so that he can focus on things and I'm constantly aware and taking in everything that's happening and if I need to really deeply focus, I need to put myself in an environment where there aren't distractions. And so having this awareness, having this ability to understand how I work and how those closest to me work is incredible because it really does help to minimize that feeling of conflict or misunderstandings that happen within relationships. So for that, I love the variables. I love them for other things too, but that's a, a key highlight that I have personally taken. So how about you? Those are just a few of the key pieces that I've really learned in these past three years with my human design experiment and having learned about this system. I'd love to know from you what your experience has been. So let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you're new on this journey and you want to know more, please do reach out. You can find the link to schedule an appointment with me and I will give you a unique to you human design reading. So that information is in the description box below. Let me know in the comments about your experience. Also, while you're there, click on that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and click the notification bell so you know every time I post new videos. This channel has drifted a little bit from strictly human design content. However, you'll see it sprinkled in throughout the videos. But also, I'm really working with using our energy to the best of its ability. So stay tuned for more and let me know in the comments what information you're really interested in. Um, give any of the videos that you really like a thumbs up so I know what kinds of content to continue to create. But let's be honest, I'm going to create what I want to create. And I really hope that it works for you and that it gets shared with the people who need it. So thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.